lesson 28 prachahara prachahara is an often neglected limb of yoga it's one of the eight limbs the fifth first there is yama niyama the moral foundation of yoga then you have asana physical exercise to prepare you for pranayama the fourth limb with energy control which leads to a change in perception we become as I've mentioned many times before because it's so important that we are aware of this we become more sensitive more conscious with awakening consciousness inevitably you end up at some point overwhelmed by the amount of impressions that you um, absorb unknowingly you can't help it because it's it's just a consequence of your increased uh, uh, perception now yoga for many people exists out of physical exercise there are also um, um, there are also people uh, more traditional ones that focus only on meditation Brahma Kumaris I've uh, uh, talked with people from Brahma Kumaris Raja Yoga if you if you search for rajayoga.com you end up with Brahma Kumaris they do only meditation and um, talk about the philosophy of yoga but in the end yoga is a complete system it's not only meditation it's not only asana first there is the moral foundation which is the first two limbs then you have the practical part the fifth limb is to deal with what you trigger with the first four limbs Pratyahara therefore is very important and this is very much in contradiction with how it is being treated in most yoga courses if it is addressed at all because of course in a complete yoga course they have to explain all eight limbs they will explain uh, Pratyahara um, because Pratyahara means detachment so from what are you supposed to detach so they will say detach from your status detach from your material possessions and that's basically all there is to the subject now detachment from material aspects of life is of course helpful but the material foundation is very important to allow you to follow the spiritual path if the if the the material foundation is not present you are always worried about survival and there is no room leave alone energy uh, available to focus on um, the luxury basically of, of uh, the spiritual path you're busy surviving providing for yourself and your family so Telling your students that you must detach from your material possessions is a little bit superficial. Much more important is, and what is not, what, what you don't learn most of the times, is that Pratyahara is designed, is a very logical, there is a reason why it's the fifth step. It is designed to help you deal with the the increased perception that results from the first four elements of yoga yama and niyama put something in motion that makes you think about yourself and your place in this world it also often leads to reflection on things that have happened in the past and in the present are happening um, asana Pranayama lead uh, to
to awakening, opening up of the crown chakra. All the senses become sharper, the five gross senses, but also the sixth sense, your intuition, your, your sensitivity towards vibrations in the environment around you from other people, all become more um, um, receptive, more sensitive. And one of the natural things that happens in every yoga practitioner is self-awareness. And that always starts with investigation of the past. That is just a very natural element that we are drawn to because of this inherent and natural need to understand ourselves better that takes place in every yoga practitioner. That is the first things that you start exploring when your consciousness awakens. You start digging into your past and Surely there are many pleasant memories in the past, but the ones that really affect you are the negative experiences, the traumatic experiences, the disturbing and disrupting experiences that, that have conditioned you subconsciously, that are being triggered in certain situations and, and leads to um, triggering reactions that, that we can't control and often regret later, now you're going to start becoming aware of it. You start connecting the dots. You start developing insight into what made you who you are today. And that's not only pleasant memories, it's very often unpleasant memories. It is important that you go through that process, but at the same time, it is important that you know how to deal with those negative memories and impressions, traumatic experiences. Because on the surface, and technically, they are pieces of information, rational, that help us understand where we come from, who we are, why we are like that, and where we can go in the future. It is often past experiences that determine our future, our destination. We have no control over that. And it can be very miserable. When we start understanding all that, it gives us the key to taking control. So it's a very important process but we must be aware of the negative impact that it can have. So while not ignoring it for the sake of avoiding the, the misery that can be dug up in the process, it is an important process to go through, but at the same time we must guard ourselves from being sucked up into the negativity of uh, this process, the, the, the discovery uh, and puzzling together of all these events that have led to us being who we are in the present. So what we learn with Pratyahara is detachment, not so much from our material wealth or possessions, but detachment from disturbing issues. And with emphasis or with a special um, uh, no notice of emotions that can pull us down. When I was in my 20s, I come from a big family. I have told you this before. Seven children, a mother and a father who were not really on good terms with each other. So my childhood and my teenage years were very tumultuous. 
And as a child, you have no control over that. In my teenage years, I was in a very dark hole, depressed, um, not going anywhere with my life really, on a very self-destructive path, actually, until I discovered yoga when I was 20 years old. When I started practicing yoga, life took a turn for the better. I started connecting with myself again, with my hopes and my dreams, and I started pursuing those. It, it made me aware of a deep interest in martial arts, traditional martial arts, because that also has a spiritual element to it. I was not interested in hardcore martial arts, combat sports, but traditional martial arts. So a little search in the yellow pages brought me to a Hapkido gym in Amsterdam. And I started practicing Hapkido, which is Korean. So make a long story short, that became kind of my obsession. At that time, people didn't know much about Korean, about Korea other than uh, the Korean War from 50 to 53. Um, now, because of the internet and, and K-pop, and uh, everybody knows about Korea now, and Korea knows about everybody. At that time, Korea was a hermit kingdom. It truly was, closed off almost to the outside world, awakening, but still very limited. So you go to a Korean restaurant, you eat some Korean food, you talk with your Korean teacher, you, you read books from the library about Korean culture, you become intrigued, and that became my mission. I wanted to go to Korea. To do so, I prepared. I was preparing. I, I knew that I needed first to lay a foundation. because I think I told you I had some Hapkido buddies who, after our Korean teacher went back to Seoul, I still meet him sometimes, he's, uh, he's here. Um, within a year, they all came to Korea and they all went back as soon as their money uh, ran out. So I wanted to do it right. I wanted to at least get a, a third degree black belt, which qualifies you to be an independent uh, instructor. If I would go back to the Netherlands, it was not my plan at first, of course, to stay here. But I just wanted to come back with a qualification. All of them did not. So I had to finish my yoga study with Ajita. I had to finish my evening school where I studied uh, uh, business administration and economics so that I would be able to, to run a, uh, my own business if necessary. But I dropped out of school. I dropped out of Ajita's class. At Ajita's class, I dropped out twice. And in sheer desperation, I contacted him, I called him and I said, Ajita, can I talk with you? Can I come, meet you, and talk with you? Then he said, okay, why don't you come this and this time? So I went there, we sat down, he said, sit down, small IKEA bench. <laughs> and we sat down and he said, tell me. So I started telling. I, I have two brothers. I have three brothers, two of whom were addicted to, to drugs and, and alcohol and on a very destructive path. And I grew up with them. We did everything together when we were children and as teenagers too. We all three were on the same destructive path, so to speak. I escaped from that. I followed my way. But of course, it's family. It's your own blood. And psychologically, that sits very deep. You want to help them. So I did. I tried to help them. I took them on vacations to southern France, to, to, to Cap d'Acte on the beach, just for a month. No drugs, little alcohol. But it didn't work. And it was very frustrating. And um, it just pulled me back all the time. So I started practicing yoga at the age of 20 started kind of taking control. At the age of 25, 26, 27, I just got stuck. It's so frustrating. Now I understand how it works, but it's very easy to think that some, that is something that you can change or control. 
But Ajita made me aware of Pratyahara. What I did when he told me, tell me huh, what's going on. I started talking about the past, about my brother's misery and my frustration not being able to help him. Within one minute of me starting with this whole story of my misery, he said, wait, 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 what do you want? So I said, I want to go to Korea. His next question was, what do you need to do for that? So I said, I need to finish my study with you. I need to finish my night uh, study and earn safe enough money to be able to stay in Korea, at least for two years. So he said, okay, do not talk about your misery anymore. Instead, focus on what you need to do. From now on, come back to my class, go back to your, your formal education, and keep saving money and prepare to go to Korea. Every time that you feel distracted, remind yourself consciously to stay focused on what you want to achieve. And that changed everything. That advice changed everything. Every time I was inclined to lose myself in that emotion, emotion of the past, emotion of my brother's misery, I quickly detach myself from that negative sentiment and redirected my attention towards something that I need to do to prepare to go, re to, to, go to Korea. And it's so powerful, so, so simple, so powerful. And you would think this is easy to do, it is not. Until you are being drawn with your nose directly onto the issue, how to deal with it in a practical way, and then go to work with it very consciously. The prachahara is crucial in our lives. We all have things in the past that have a tendency to pull us back. And especially where it comes to family, that is your, that is your blood. That is, that is something that I realized later, something that you, is very hard to rationalize. No matter how hard you try to not be uh, pulled into that pool of, of, of uh, uh, misery, no matter how hard you try to be positive and follow your own path, which, which I did for years, it still happened that I got stuck and really desperate for not being able to control that. It gives a sense of failure if you're so full of hope and dreams and everything that happens is that every time you get stuck and you have a feeling that you're not getting anywhere. Ajita said, he just asked me, what do you want? How do you get there? Okay, then go to work. So simple, so powerful. That's Pratyahara. In short, that is the essence of Pratyahara. Jessica? No, I was... So kind of untangible in a way, not that I, I was really trying to understand the meaning of, of it. I'm a little bit confused. I, I'm, I'm not disagreeing with it, I'm mm -hmm. just a little bit confused in the yeah. sense of you have uh, this, what you are share with us, this uh, pulling you back, no? coming from yeah. the family and all, all the worries that were coming from that. Yeah. No, but also, also back to self-destructive behavior, like drinking mm -hmm. beer. Um, but, but with him, yeah. that matter wasn't addressed in that talk. You jumped to another thing, yeah. which is, where do you want to go? Which as I am saying, I don't disagree with that, but I'm just a little bit wondering what happened with, with what was behind. I think it's a good way to move forward in life. Yeah. Um, no, the, the, con the conclusion is the, conclu the conclusion is my, my brothers were it was impossible to change their minds. It was impossible to put them on another path. Is, yeah. And if it starts to destroy you, you have to make a choice. Is that the attachment 
Well, at least take care of yourself and, and, and uh, your own well-being because it was affecting my, my everything, including my well-being. And it, it was the right thing to do. If you, people can only change if they want to change. You cannot help people change because you want them to change. It just it doesn't work. And I had to find that out uh, the hard way. It, it, it's, it's a sad story because I had to let them go. I knew intuitively that they were not going to live very long in that way. And indeed, they died in their, in their mid-40s, both of them. So I just had to let that go. And, and um, uh, it's sad, but, but, you know, it's a choice that you have to make for your own, um, for your own good, really. It's, it's a little bit an extreme story that I'm telling you. Not, not everybody is dealing with such heavy uh, things, but, but um, it, gives, it gives a little bit an idea of what Prachahara is about. You, you may be in a situation um, um, in a relationship or uh, at work where you are in a, in a, in a situation that you, you feel great resistance, be very unhappy maybe, or frustrated, or you know, all those things together. You don't want to be there, but, but, but you don't have much choice. In that case, also, you can, you can survive by finding something of your own, focusing on that, and every time when you're being distracted by the, 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 by the elements of the negative situation that you're in, you try to deal with that in a constructive way without losing yourself in emotion, and redirect your energy then, your attention, towards that thing that really matters to you. And the interesting part of this approach also is that the, the issues that you're dealing with, that you're not really so happy with, sooner or later solve themselves. You find another job or the, 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 the situation with, the, with the, the unlucky situation or unhappy situation with the, the partner or family uh, will evolve in a certain way. But in the meantime, you just focus on things that are really important for you as a person, not uh, related to, to those people or those situations. And it, it, it kind of worked because time will do the work to bring about change in, in, um, in, that, uh, in that situation. Especially if you're in a situation that you, that you cannot change. It is in this respect also important that when you're being bothered by bad experiences from your past, that you must also withdraw your attention from those events, people, and thoughts. It's, it's important that you do not blame yourself and also uh, deal with guilt in a constructive way. One of the things that happens when we dig into the past is that when it comes to traumatic experiences, we have a tendency to, to blame to blame the perpetrators, to blame the people who, um, who caused uh, pain, misery, who mistreated us, abused us, what have you. Now, from the beginning of the course, I've been trying to bring the message home that emotion is actually a message. It is teaching us something. But emotion is very tricky because it becomes involved with ego, and when it becomes involved with ego, we lose ourselves in the emotion, we suffer from the emotion, but we are not capable of doing something constructive with the message that it's trying to tell us. So when you experience a sense of guilt, no, let's stick with blame first. Guilt we, is the opposite. Blame is something that you put on people that had done something wrong to you in the past. But guilt is something that you feel when you 
are confronted with something that you did wrong in the past. How do you deal with this? You cannot delete it from your life. But what you can do is simply try to take it as information. And when it comes to guilt, you must realize that if you have done something wrong in the past, it's almost always out of ignorance. You didn't do it deliberately to hurt people. You did not deliberately do something wrong to do wrong. It is out of ignorance that we often do wrong. And in the same way that you have such an understanding attitude towards your own wrongdoing, that's the only thing that you can do basically in a constructive way, you extend that same kind of attitude towards other people who did wrong in your life. Because mostly people who do wrong in your life, they also do that out of ignorance, just like you have done before. It doesn't make it right, it doesn't excuse those people, but it gives you at least a positive tool to deal with it. You accept it and you try to do something constructive with the experience. At least stop being a victim of that sentiment because it, it will keep pulling you back. If it is a traumatic experience, it will, it will continue to pull you back and, and haunt you. That, that is, that is the, the problem with people who are traumatized is often that they can't function normal anymore. They can't focus on study. They can't focus on, on keeping a job. So people like that often, their misery is being worsened by their inability to have control over their life their relationships, their, their professional life, and what have you. So it's very important that we learn to look at emotions in an in a objective way, in a rational way. What is it trying to tell me? What does this mean? And how to move forward. And when you can do that, you become a master over your own destiny. Because in ignorant people, in unconditioned people, destiny is determined by your past and the way that your past has conditioned you. Being able to see that, to understand that, will allow you to move away from that direction and choose your own direction in life. There is an English or an American expression that says, when life presents you lemons, make lemonade. It simply means turning something negative into something positive. And in that sense, in yoga, there is no good and bad, if you look at it from this perspective, because it makes you wiser, it makes you stronger. And Because it allows you to take control over your future, over your destiny, you will even come to the point that what made you miserable in the past, you develop a sense of gratitude. Because you start to realize that if that had not happened in your life, you wouldn't be where you are. You would not have achieved what you have achieved. So in that sense, you can always turn lemons into lemonade. Not easy, but what, what alternative do you have? You cannot turn back the clock and undo the past. You cannot undo what other people did. You cannot undo what you yourself did. You have to live with that. You might as well do something good with it, something positive with it. For me, it ended up coming to Korea and diverting my attention from, from the, the, the interest in martial arts, that was just a superficial thing. I needed something to put my heart into, to put my, 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 to canalize my energy also. But it is yoga that really um, 
stuck with me and it, be, it became my, uh, my chosen uh, uh, destiny as a result of that. And without the things that have happened, if the things that happened in the past, if they hadn't happened, I would probably be sitting in front of the TV now uh, uh, watching uh, soccer like most uh, Dutch men do and, and drinking a lot of beer and eating uh, snacks and so on. But I chose something constructive, something that I can do with, with heart and soul, so to speak, with passion. So, Pratyahara, detachment, means to take control of the emotions that you're being confronted with as a result of your increased sensitivity and consciousness. If you find yourself in trouble, drop me a line. Also, after the course is finished. I know that I'm opening a can of worms with what I teach to people and that makes it my responsible for as long as I live that whenever people do get in trouble or do not know how to handle something they're being confronted with as a result of increased sensitivity and consciousness. Drop me a line, I will give you very practical and concise uh, uh, advice to deal with it in a very practical way. A virtual uh, kick in the butt, so to speak, like Ajita gave me at that time. Good. Next week we will continue talking about different kinds of pratyahara, some practical uh, ways to deal with pratyahara. It is absolutely not. This is one of the most difficult aspects of um, not only yoga but life, basically. I'm thinking that the way that you picture it turns a little bit easy when, when you think that you need to detach of something awful. You know what I mean? Yeah. From a very uncomfortable situation or yeah. a very traumatic situation. In a way, it sounds easy because you know that that's harmful, so you need to let it go. Yeah, but but I, easier said than done. Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, but I'm thinking, for example, on, on minor things that you could face as, as a mother. I was thinking on, on the attachment that you have with your kids. Yeah. Um, I mentioned that in the handout also. And I think that's quite interesting. Um, because the, the attachment comes with, a, with another complexity, I, I, I think. Yeah. Especially because, well, my kids are rather small, um, so the, the harm or, or the awful or the awkward or the disturbing situation uh, might not be that big. No? But anyway, they, they might be things that, uh, since now, you, you really need to start letting go. But it's hard because you feel the responsibility that you need to, to guide them, you need yep. to transfer things, you need to... So, yeah, I, I think raising children is, is very hard because uh, you want to protect them, you want to keep them safe from pain and harm and, and bad experiences. But on the other hand, you know that experiences in life make us stronger and wiser. So how do you approach that as a parent? It's very difficult to let them go and experience life as harsh as, as it can be. Often. And they can do things that harm you as well as, as parents. Yeah. The way they, they talk to you, they reply to you, they yeah. pay So I think uh, it's uh, Yeah. Parents sometimes forget that they were once that age. 
So when, when, when your own children behave uh, uh, rude or, or bad, it's also helpful sometimes to remember that we were once that age and it's something that will, they will outgrow. Questions about Prachahara? If I touched upon a raw nerve, then that, that is exactly the idea. Um, try to... Um, first there is the hit, the trigger, the emotion. Then try to kind of rise above it and uh, observe the process. What, what caused it, um, how it affects you, and then see if there is uh, something that you can do to, to canalize that. <laughs> All right, let's have a short break.